Okay, so as I mentioned, with regard to depreciation and the tax law, you don't get choices. The, the method with which you depreciate an asset, the length of time that you depreciate it over, um, and even when you start depreciating it, are all determined by uh, when you purchased it, what type of asset it is, um, yeah, what type of asset it is. It, it's gotta fall into certain categories. And then the IRS tells you how you're gonna depreciate it, which method you're gonna use, when you're gonna start depreciating it, um, and uh, what your basis is in that asset, and how long you're gonna depreciate it over. You don't get the choice. Let's take a look here. There are essentially four components of depreciation for taxes. One is the basis. We use that term basis a lot in tax. Basis usually means cost. So what did you pay for it? The initial basis is your cost, what you paid for it. However, it's also going to include, remember, now this part is the same. Remember in financial accounting, your cost of the asset wasn't just what you paid for it. What also would it include? What else would, what else would it include? Let's say you bought a piece of equipment. Interest. What's that? Interest. In, interest? Well, I'm sorry. Interest. Interest on the interest would actually be a separate category. That would be an expense. Okay, so if or installation, or yeah, so if there were installation costs, the training would also be a set. Like if you need, if an individual needed training on how to use it, that would be a separate expense. But installation. item ready to use okay so that's the same same as in financial accounting our, our cost would be the same and this is our basis now as time goes on our base our basis gets adjusted this could change okay if we improve this item this piece of equipment, our base, and we spend money to improve it, our basis in it goes up, it increases. Basis also decreases by depreciation, okay? So our initial basis is what we need in order to determine first off when we purchase an asset. Again, these are just assets, okay? Anything that's, uh, Assets, what's the definition of an asset? Let's see if you remember this. I mean, there's not one specific definition, but what do assets do? Something you own. Okay, so you own it. Does it, what does it do for you in your business? Provides. Provides. Income. Income, it's something that's gonna generate income in the future, right? Okay. So, in, and it's going to generate income over a period of time longer than a year. So an asset is some, some sort of income generating item. Something that's gonna help you um, and you're gonna have it for a long period of time. So things like wages, well that's an expense, right? That's not, you're not paying for an asset. Your, although your human resources are definitely an asset, we haven't really monetized uh, or we haven't determined that they are an asset for tax or financial accounting purposes. Um, they're a soft asset. But things like, um, okay, our computer is broken down. Uh, we need to repair it. We need to fix it. We need to get somebody in here to fix somebody's 
Oh, they don't even have disk drives. Oh, okay. So the USB drives, somebody stuck something in there and now we can't, we can't use it. So we got to get somebody to come in and return it to its original condition. Okay. That's a repair. That's an expense. If however, we decide, okay, this computer, we need to improve it. We need to add some memory to it. We need to, um, we're going to double the memory capacity. We're going to in, install some video cards and uh, make it make it better than it was. Well, that, and we're making it better so that it will either extend the life of it or it will uh, make it more valuable in the long run or help us to produce more income in the long run, right? Then now we're improving this, this asset. That's more of the uh, improvements on this asset, okay? So a repair, just bringing it back to its original condition, something's happened to it, as opposed to an improvement on it, something that's going to extend its life or give it more value in the long run would be more of an asset. So first factor is basis. Again, our cost plus all of these items are basis. And again, you'll see how that basis gets adjusted over, um, over time as we go through. Second thing, is our depreciation periods, okay? So these are known as asset class lives. These are determined by the IRS. The IRS says, this is a table, seven years. This is a computer, five years. Your car or truck that you're using in your business, five years. That office building that you own, 39 years. The carpet that you're walking on, 10 years. The IRS determines that, you don't get a choice with it. They also call that asset class lives because the assets are in separate classes. You've got three year class lives, five year class lives, seven, these are the most common, seven year class lives, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year. You don't have to write all of that down. We'll get, <laughs> I see Brian writing. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, you'll see when we get to the depreciation schedules, we've got a 27 and a half year, 39 year, the, the amount of time that you depreciate an asset over is dependent upon what class it's in. And the IRS tells you what class it's in, okay? So it's kind of nice though, you know, you know, it, it takes away a lot of the decision making because it just, it is what it is, right? Depreciation convention. We're not going to a convention. Let's all go to the depreciation convention. <laughs> Um, sounds, sounds really exciting, doesn't it? Depreciation convention. This is completely different from anything that you, that we have in financial accounting. This is a completely new concept. Depreciation convention determines when we start depreciating an asset. Okay. Sorry, this is squeaky. Okay. And start and stop. Depreciating. All right. So in financial accounting, if we purchase, uh, we purchase this table on October 1st, we're going to start depreciating it on October 1st. Right? If we put it, in, when we put it into use, right? We start using it October 1st when we're, is when we're gonna start depreciating it. Well, for tax purposes, we might not start depreciating. In fact, we won't start depreciating it on October 1st. We hardly ever start depreciating an asset on the actual day that we put it into service. We will either depreciate it starting in the middle of the year, July 1st, even if we purchased it October 1st. <laughs> Middle of the quarter.
quarter. So October 15th, is that right? No, November 15th, sorry. November 15th, if we purchased it October 1st, that's the fourth quarter. We purchase, if we start depreciating, use the mid-quarter convention, we're gonna start depreciating it November 15th. We've owned it and are using it for a month and a half before we even start depreciating it. Or mid-month convention. Mid-month means we're gonna start depreciating it in the middle of the month in which we purchase it. October 1st, well, this wouldn't apply to tables and you'll see why. We, don't, we never use the mid-month convention for um, personal property. We only use it for real property, but for the sake of argument, if we bought it on October 1st, we'd start depreciating it October 15th if we use the mid-month convention. This is weird, right? There's nothing like this in financial accounting. We start depreciating it when we start using it in financial accounting, right? Now, it's really convenient in all of your textbooks in financial accounting. It's always like the first of the month, last of the month. They don't make it too difficult for you. Um, but it's always when you start, when you put it into service. Not with this. We've got three choices. June, I'm sorry, July 1st, mid-quarter, depending upon the quarter, mid-month. So that's our, our conventions. The last component is our depreciation method. Again, the IRS tells us what we can use um, for the most part. Some, you can use straight, you can always use straight line if you choose to. But for the most part, we have three methods of depreciation that we can use. 200% declining balance, which means we're going to start with a larger chunk of depreciation and it's going to be reduced every year until we get down to zero. 150% declining balance, same concept but it's not reducing as quickly, or straight line. We all know what straight line is. Okay, there's no triple declining balance, there's no uh, some of the year's digits, there's no, uh, there's some other depreciation methods that they, I'm trying to remember them off the top of my head. Uh, double declining, well, we do have that one, that's the 200%. Um, anybody else remember others? Gosh, it's been a few years since I taught intermediate, so I can't even <laughs> Anyway, this determines how we're going to do four pieces, um, these four components. So let's go through each of them. I know I kind of gave you a summary and talked a lot about some of them, but let's go through each of them individually. All right, so depreciable basis. So again, we're gonna start with our cost, just like, uh, it's like book value on financial accounting. Um, it can be different depending on how the property was acquired. Um, so if you purchased it, that's easy, right? It's whatever you paid for it. But what happens if somebody gave it to you or you traded it in or, or you traded something else in for it or you inherited it? Um, those are some, some different, you'll have different costs. So this table shows you what basis you use, because you gotta start with a number, right? You gotta start with some sort of number. If you've purchased it, then the cost of the asset, plus, you know, all these items to get it ready to use. That's easy. Now, if you converted it from personal to business use, all right, I've got a truck that I've been using personally for the last four years, and now I've started a business, and I'm going to use that truck in my business. I've converted it from personal to business use. Either the lower of my cost or the fair market value at the date that I converted it. Well, if it's a truck, chances are the lower of those two is gonna be the fair market value when I converted it. I paid $30,000 for it, but right now when I convert it, the, the fair market value is 10,000. 
10,000 is my basis. That's my starting point for that truck. Okay. Non-taxable exchange, this is when you've traded an item for another item, but you have put off, it's also called the 1031 exchange, you've put off recognition of any gain. There are certain circumstances under which you could do that. I think it's I think it's limited to real property nowadays. It used to be pretty much any property you could do that. Um, we're not going to do a whole lot with that, but just FYI. So the assets cost less any deferred gain on the old asset. So if I traded my truck for, let's say, uh, $40,000, for a, for a $40,000 truck. My $30,000 truck for a $40,000 truck. So my cost, $30,000, minus the deferred gain, $10,000 on my, on my assets. So that's that, then that $20,000 would be the basis. You're essentially attaching that gain that you would have recognized if you just sold it to the basis of the new, of the new uh, piece of equipment. Um, if you inherited it, so grandma left me the truck. Typically, the fair market value at the date of death is what is used for the basis. So grandma died October 1st and she left me the truck. Whatever it was worth on October 1st is my basis, my fair market value. So it does depend upon um, how you acquired that item. sole proprietorship. She also inherited land and a building from her father. So the land had a basis of 10,000. Let me scroll up so we can see the, the table that we were looking at before. Here we go. So the land had a basis of $10,000, fair market value of $18,000 on the date of her father's death. 18,000. Date of death. 18,000. The building had a $150,000 adjusted basis. Remember I said this could be adjusted over time. So apparently there were some adjustments over time. Maybe it was depreciated. Maybe there were improvements to it. Who knows which way it was adjusted. And a $300,000 fair market value at his death. So she inherited land and the building. She now uses both land and building for her office. In this case, the computer, because she purchased it for $2,500, has a basis of $2,500. Uh, the building's depreciable basis is $300,000, right? So we're going to start with $300,000 $300, for uh, that, um, for the building. The land has a basis of $18,000. Now, one thing they do mention here, just like in financial accounting, we don't depreciate land. So if it's land, it goes on the tax return, but it never gets depreciated. Okay. Now if they went, and, she went and sold that for twenty thousand, she'd have a gain of two thousand dollars on that land, right? But that's cool because if her father had sold it for twenty thousand, he'd have a ten thousand dollar gain. Now she only has a two thousand dollar gain because. He waited until he was dead before he gave it to her. Right? Um, here, Ashley also converted to business use an old van. Basis in that van was $13,000. Fair market value was $6,000 on the date of conversion. She now plans to use the, that van 100% for business. This is relevant because this basis would be multiplied by, by whatever the business use is. The van's depreciable basis is 6,000, which is the lower of the adjusted basis or fair market value at the date of conversion. Had the van been used less than 100% for business, the $6,000 basis would be multiplied by the business usage percentage to determine. So if it was used 75% for business, let's say 66.6%, easier for me to calculate, um, 
then it would have a depreciable basis of four thousand right. dollars. Is that right? Two, four, six. All right. Question on basis. This is our starting point. We need to know this because we need to know. Uh, we need to know. you're going to depreciate an item over. The most common that we use, 5, 7, 27 and a half, and 39. That's in, in this class, too, the, the most common ones that we'll use. Um, you can see, and this is just a partial list. You can get more detailed information on the IRS website about what type of what types of assets or how long you depreciate certain assets over. Um, racehorses, did you know you depreciate racehorses? <laughs> racehorses, less than two years old, certain specialized industry tools are depreciated over three years. There are other items as well that are depreciated over three years. I think uh, software is included in that. I, I can't remember what other items, but five years. Autos and light trucks, light meaning less than 6,000 pounds. Um, computers and peripheral equipment. So monitors, printers, scanners, that kind of stuff. Five year class life. Seven year furniture, fixtures and equipment. A table, uh, that, if it's attached to the, well what else? Table, chairs. Even though it may not last that long, I mean, I can't imagine that these tables are going to last seven years. Maybe they will. I don't know. Depends on how people treat them. They're still depreciated over uh, seven years. Ten years, vessels, barges, tubs, and fruit or nut-bearing plants. So that avocado tree that you have, that's producing avocados that you're selling, you can depreciate it over ten years. Uh, Fifteen years, wastewater treatment plants and telephone distribution plants. Very specific. There are other items that are depreciated over 15 years, too. 20 years, farm buildings. Okay, so in Iowa, that would be a common one as well. So barns, sheds, things like that that are used on the farm. Now it's different because other buildings are normally depreciated over 27 and a half or 39 years, but if it's on a farm, it's depreciated over a shorter period of time, over a 20 year period. 27 and a half years, residential real property. Anything that somebody lives in that they're paying rent to inhabit. Apartments, homes, townhomes, uh, duplexes, triplexes, whatever. Those buildings, if it's residential, I'm going to skip over 31 and a half year for, for a second here. 39 year are non-residential buildings, aside from farm buildings. Office buildings, industrial buildings, places, uh, buildings, real estate where business is, is conducted, people don't live there, right? This 31 and a half year, the 39 year came into being in uh, 1993. So before that time, it was before May 13th, 1993, that property, uh, that uh, non-residential property was depreciated over 31 and a half years. So those buildings are still, there are still a few that would be being depreciated if they, if they were purchased between 87 and 93, then they would still be, well, the 87, eh, 31 and a half years, what is that? May 13th, so, 93, 03, 13, 23, yeah, we'd still be, have property that's, that's being depreciated under that old, that old uh, length of time, but now we don't. It's, it's all 39 year property, right? Anything beyond, I mean, earlier than that would already be depreciated anyway. All right, so these are our, our depreciation periods. So first, we've got our basis, how much we paid for it. Second, uh, component 
asset class five, okay, what is it? Look at the chart. That's how long we're gonna depreciate it over. Again, that's pretty easy, right? We haven't really, hasn't, uh, the, the IRS tells us everything, tells us how to do all this stuff. They don't trust us. What if it's like a heavy truck? Does it say light truck? So well, if it's like something, so heavy trucks are, they're a little, it depends on whether it's a passenger vehicle or not, and how they're using it. Like if it's, I think they assume that the heavier trucks are probably more used as equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would be depreciated over seven years instead of the five years. There are special rules for, for any type of, any type of, vehicle, so whether it goes over the road or not makes a difference. All right, convention. What time is it? Yeah, we can talk for this. Okay, now we get a little bit sticky. So first off, convention. So we've got three different types of conventions. personal property, one of them is for real property. So let's get the easy one out of the way, even though they, they put it last, okay? For real property, this is real estate. So we've only got two depreciation methods. Now the farm buildings, we're not gonna talk about farm buildings. The residential, real estate, and we've got office or non-residential real estate. Okay, that would fall under this category of real property. So building of some sort is always gonna be using the mid money. That's it. So that's easy. And don't worry, I'll get to explaining what that is and how it's calculated and all that stuff. So we've got real property, and we've got what's called personal property. This does not mean that you own it personally. This means that it's not real property. Some sort of asset that's not real property. Okay. We have two different methods, two different conventions. Again, the IRS tells us which one we're going to use and I'll, uh, I'll go through the circumstances under which we use each one. Um, know that if you use, for these conventions, you use the same convention for all of your assets placed in service that year. So you don't like have, oh, I bought a table and I bought a computer, I'm using the mid month or the, the half year convention for the table and I'm using the mid quarter convention for the computer. You don't do that. You use the same convention for the same class. Well, actually, I said that wrong because those are two separate classes. Uh, table and chairs. That's one class, asset class, right? It's uh, their furniture and fixtures, seven year property. So I'm going to use the same convention, but it depends on when I place them in service, when I purchase them. Okay, so we've got two conventions here. We've got the half year, and we've got the mid quarter. All right, so three different ones. One, two, three, and whatever order you want. Um, doesn't really matter, but we'll start out talking about the I'll we'll start out talking about the mid month one because this one is probably the easiest conceptually. Yeah, because this is all they say. Mid -month. All right, so the mid month convention simply means that you place it in, or you start depreciating it in the middle of the month in which it was purchased. That's pretty easy, right? So if I buy a building, say I bought a rental property. Um, October 27th, I'm gonna start depreciating it October 15th. 
I bought an office building on January uh, 14th. I'm going to start depreciating it January 15th. Right? So, I mean, essentially the 15th day of whatever month you purchased it in is when you're going to start depreciating it. Questions? That's, I mean, that's it for real property. And you'll see on the tables, when we get to the table, which won't be today, um, when we get to looking at the tables, how that's all calculated, it's baked into the tables. But that means that you also use the same convention in the year that you dispose of it. Okay, so if I, dis I bought it, uh, bought it uh, December, Fourth, and I sold it or disposed of it somehow on March 31st, then I start depreciation. When would I start this? December. Yep, December 15th. When would I end <coughs> depreciation? March 15th. March 15th. So I use the same convention in the, that I began with when I sell it, when I dispose of that asset. Questions? All right. And if you bought it like December 30th, will you just go to the next month? Nope, December 15th. Yep, whatever month you're in, oh. middle of that month. Doesn't matter, even if you didn't own it yet, you can start depreciating it in the middle of that month. Yep. All right. So that one's fairly simple, the, the mid-month convention. The other two, however, dealing with um, personal property. placed all of your assets in service during the year, all of your personal property in service during the year. Because when you placed it in service determines which convention you use. Um, so with the half year convention, again, this is fairly simple. You're going to start depreciating it July 1st if you can use the half year convention. Okay, so you just start July 1st. You bought it January 14th, you start depreciating it July 1st. You bought it September 4th, you start depreciating it July 1st. Same when you get rid of it. You stop depreciating it June 30th. Now, there are requirements to use it though, and you, you use it when you can't use the mid-quarter convention, when you don't use the mid-quarter convention. So really, the first thing you would do is determine, do I have to use the mid-quarter convention? If I have to use the mid-quarter convention, okay, I'll use that. If I don't have to use it, I'm going to use the half-year convention. Mid-quarter convention says that you start depreciating it in the middle of the quarter in which you purchased it. So, let's see. I'll do it over here, I guess. So, January 1st through March 31st. April 1st through June. 30th, July 1st through September 30th, October 1st through December 31st. All right.
So if you bought it, you choose the, the quarter that you purchased it in. Depending upon the quarter, that's when you start you start depreciating it in the middle of that quarter. So So if I bought it, if I bought, uh, I bought this computer on August 27th, when do I start depreciating it? August 15th. Right. I bought this table on December 31st. When do I start depreciating it? November 15th. Um, I bought that cabinet back there on October 4th. Today? When do I start depreciating it? November 15th. Right. So this is the mid quarter convention. So when do we use this? Can I erase it? Well, I'm going to erase this. Okay, so this is for the mid quarter MQ. Convention. When do we use this? We only have to use this under certain circumstances. We only have to use this when we place more than 40% of our personal property, not including real property, only personal property, in service during the last three months of the year. The purpose behind this is to prevent businesses from purchasing all of their assets on December 31st and then getting half a year's depreciation. Because otherwise, if we didn't have this, you could buy a bunch of stuff on December 31st and you get to start depreciating it July 1st. Right? You just buy all that stuff, but you really haven't used it, but you get to depreciate it starting July 1st. So you get a big tax boost in that year. More than 40% of personal property in service during the last three months of the year. So this is the aggregate basis of the property placed in service does not include real property. So let's look at an example here. We've got a piece of equipment we purchased. This is all, this is all personal property up here. There's no buildings. January 6th. 7,400, May 4th, 20,000, December 1st, 2,000. Well, you can look at that and you know that in October, November, and December, more than 40% was not placed in service. You don't even need to do the math on that, right? Because only $2,000 of 29,400 was placed in service in the last three months. So they can use the half year convention which means all of these items will be, will start depreciating them July 1st. Now, <coughs> I think there's an example in here. No? Oh, give me an example of the other. So let's make our own example then. Okay, so there's, this one they're gonna use the half year convention. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's say so equipment again January sixth, seventy four hundred uh, truck October first, twenty thousand. that were purchased in the last quarter instead of just the one over there because this was purchased October 1st this was purchased December 1st so let's determine this let's add it all up 29 400 is our total then add up the total of the items purchased in the last quarter 22,000 
and then you're going to divide it. 22,000 divided by 29,400. What's that total? Did I do that right? Maybe I got it backwards. No, I think that's right. 22,000 divided by 29,400. What's 75%? 75%? All right, 75% of our assets were purchased in the last quarter. That means we cannot use the half year convention. We're gonna have to start, we're gonna have to now use the mid quarter convention. So when would we start depreciating the equipment? February 15th. February 15th, right. We start February 15th. When would we start depreciating the truck? Mm -hmm. November 15th. When would we start depreciating the uh, this equipment? November 15th. Now we have to use. So what you want to do is total up all of your assets and then total up the assets that were purchased in the last quarter Divide the assets purchased in the last quarter by the total assets. If it's 40%, is it more than 40%? Yeah. If it's more than 40%, use the mid-quarter convention. If it's 40% or less, use the half-year convention. Do I need to put that in a flowchart? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. All right. So, yes, yeah, the book like it explains it in like two sentences. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna bring. We'll get to the the method next time. All right. So, mid quarter or half year to determine which one we're going to use. So step one, uh, total, oh, what was it? total of all personal property service in the current year. I'm losing feeling in my arm. Two or less than, what's less than? Uh, no. Yes, 40%. I, I can't, I, I can never, I've never been able to do this right. <laughs> Equal to or less than 40% then use, I said less than, right? Then use half year convention. greater than 40%. 
center, use the mid cord. I'll leave it up there and then I'll take a picture after I'm done recording. Weird, huh? you have to actually tell sometimes you have to tell the software which convention you're using so and you have to tell the you have to tell the software like if you put in 2014 GMC whatever the software doesn't know what that is you got to tell it it's truck right and if it's a heavy truck or light truck so you got to know that um, you gotta know which category it's gonna fit into, right? Software doesn't know what your cost basis is. You gotta tell it what your basis is. Questions? So for number two, when you say last quarter of the year, what does that mean again? The, the, last, the, the last three months of the year? Yeah. yeah. So the last quarter, the last three months of the year. So the first if you placed it in service first. October, if you place, you gotta total up everything that the asset values of or the cost the basis of everything that you place in service in october november and december of that same year we're trying to determine if more than more or less than 40 percent of what we place in service during those last three months is the total of how much we place in service during the whole year was it more or less than 40 percent to discourage people from just buying the stuff at the end of the year and then taking half a year's depreciation on it. Anything else? All right. Well, we're actually over on time. So you're free to go. Well, is any homework going to be due Tuesday or